A huge thanks to Brian for sponsoring this video. Mathematicians, where you come back to another video. Today we are going to take a look at the divisibility rule for the number 11 and basically a tiny little derivation or I should rather say we are going to explore why it works the way it does work and for some reason out of the uncountably infinitely many divisibility rules that are out there on the natural numbers this one is my most favorite one. I don't know why. Maybe it's because of the method that has only been invented for this number or the function you could say or the mapping. Um, I don't know why but it just stuck with me since um, abstract algebra at university and talking about Euler phi function and the like. I just really like it. I like it even more than for example the divisibility rule for number 69, 420 or maybe for the number 7. We derived the divisibility rule there too quite a while back. Link down there in the description. I hope you are going to enjoy the video as much as I enjoy the topic. And don't forget to check out stemmerch.eu, your platform for handcrafted stem products. I got a bunch of new products and product variants going on over there at the moment as well as Flemish Wood. My woodworking channel made it over there too like my end crane cutting board. You should definitely make sure to also check out my woodworking channel. Link down in the description posted a great video quite a while ago and yeah this is my best one yet over on the channel. Make sure to check it out and support channels where now we're going to dive right in. So you can best see the divisibility rule using a little numeric example. We are going to go with the number 121. This number also just stuck with me since uh, grade school. We all know that this is just 11 squared. And I don't know why it stuck with me so much, but it's probably because it's the first number that falls out of the nice two digit pattern on the number 11. So 11, 22, 33, then up to 77, 88, 99. Then there's the 110. I mean, we have two repeating ones still, so I still see the pattern there, but then we got 121. So just separating our numbers that always stuck together giving us 121 and this is just number when I see it I always know 11 squared. I don't know. It's, it's, it's just stuck with me. And we all know that it's divisible by 11. But, but how can you tell on a regular level that this number or any other number is divisible by 11? Well, there's the so-called alternating digit sum. You know what the regular digit sum is. If we take the digit sum, this means we are going to take the sum of all the digits. 1 plus 2 plus 1 giving us 4. 4 is not divisible by 3, by the way, meaning 121 is also not divisible by 3. Just a tiny little effect on the divisibility rule for the number 3. Now, what is the alternating digit sum? As the name might suggest, alternating means that we are going to alternate the signs after each and every iteration of taking a digit. Meaning we are going to take as the alternating digit sum 1, a minus 2 and then we are going to alternate the sign again plus 1. This is going to give us 1 minus 2 is negative 1 plus 1 is going to give us 0. If, with double F, the alternating digit sum is equal to 0 of a number then this original number is divisible by 11. And this alternating digit sum has only been introduced, invented, etc. if I remember correctly for the divisibility rule um, of 11. And I think this is quite cool that you invent something just to make something different work as an analytic number theory for example. Um, just introducing Dirichlet functions and making everything work that hasn't worked before. And I want to take a look at why this works with you today. Um, just as a little other example, let's take um, a different number and let's see if it's divisible by 11. I don't know yet. Let's go with 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. I don't know if this big number is divisible by 11. I seriously don't know. Let us check with the alternating digit sum. What we are going to do on 1,234,567 is we are going to take 1 minus 2 plus 3 minus 4 plus 5 and so on. So we are going to take 1 minus 2 plus 3 minus 4 plus 5 minus 6 plus 7. Now we can always see that 2 subtracted together is going to give us negative 1. So this right here is negative 1. That's another negative 1. So negative 2, negative 3. Negative 3 plus 7 is going to give us 4 as the alternating digit sum. Meaning this boy right here ain't divisible by 11. But you can easily generate numbers which are divisible by 11 by just getting for example a number 4 
at the end here. This number now is going to be divisible by 11, which is really cool using the alternating digit sum, because now we also need to subtract 4, giving us 0 in the process. And this is how you can generate yourself numbers which are divisible by 11, which is pretty cool in and of itself. But now we are going to see how this is working. Let us take a simple numerical example and let's just work through everything and let's see how we can extract the alternating digit sum from what we got. So let's take... Um, this should be 133. This one should be divisible by 11, if I'm not mistaken. Now, if it's divisible by 11, it means we can write it as a product of 11 and another number. 143 is just 11 and then 12 and then 13. This should be 13 times 11 overall. Now this is good. This is also its prime factorization, which is pretty cool in and of itself. And now what we can do is, and this is the most important part for the alternating digit sum to pop up, what we are going to do is we are going to decompose our 11 into its basically 10th um, and 1th and place. It's 10 plus 1, so this is the same as 13 times parentheses 10 plus 1. And 1 is nothing other than 10 to the 0 of power. And now what we can use is the distributive laws. Meaning we are going to distribute the 13 into here, giving us 13 times 10 plus 13 times 1. Okay, this is where we are at right now. And next thing, what we are going to do, and this basically proves it without using modular arithmetic um, at the moment. Proof. Um, I'm just going to show you how, how it basically works out overall. And now what we are going to do is we are also going to decompose our number 13 in its basically digit decomposition. What we are going to do is we are going to notice that 13 is nothing other than 1 times 10 to the 0 of power, so uh, 10 to the first power because this is the 10th place, plus, and now here comes the 1th place, 3 times 10 to the 0 of power. All of this multiplied with 10, and then the same spiel here. We are going to get um, 1 times 10 to the first power, plus 3 times 10 to the 0 of power. Once again, we can make use of the distributive laws on here, giving us 1 times 10 squared plus 3 times 10 to the first power plus 1 times 10 to the first power plus 3 times 10 to the zero of power. And now we are going to make this process a bit more abstract. What we are going to notice is that basically um, our 1 is going to be the zero of digit. So if we were to write our 13, as basically a sum of digits, then we can decompose this into some d0 and d1 as being the digits. If we were to plug this new definition in where d0 is 1 and d1 is going to be 3, we are going to get the following equation basically, that 133 is going to be overall equal to, okay, 1 is d0 times 10 squared. Then we are going to get plus um, 3 is d1 times 10 to the first power, plus then we're going to get d naught again, 10 to the first power, plus d1, 10 to the zero of power. And one cool thing is that we can actually factor out our digits now, which correspond to the hundredth place, tenth place, and the zero of place. Meaning if we were to factor stuff out, we are going to get d naught times 10 squared, plus factoring out d1 plus d naught, times 10 to the first power plus d1 times 10 to the zero power. Now how does this help? Well the cool thing is now and by coincidence d1 plus d0 is going to end us up with another digit yet again. This digit being the number 4 right here. Okay and you can see the correspondence here. d1 is still our 3 which fits this definition and also d0 is going to be 1 which is the in, in the hundredth place. This is good. If it's not the case um, and you're going to drag one over to the next um, digit place, you have to use modular arithmetic. But in this easy example, it's, it's very easy to see how everything works. Now, cool thing is, alternating digit sum just tells us something about how we are going to treat our hundredth, tenth, and one place, and so on, thousands place, etc. Namely, what we're going to do is we're going to start with, in our case, the hundredth place digit, okay, alternating digit sum, 100th place digit, then we are going to subtract our digit from the 10th place from it, so negative d1 plus d0, and we are going to add our digit from the 1th um, place to it, plus d1. By using the distributive laws here, we are going to get that this is d0 minus d1, and then distribute a negative sign to here too, negative d0 
plus d1. And now you can see the magic happen. d0 is going to cancel out, d1 is going to cancel out, giving us zero overall as the alternating digit sum. We basically turn this process with numerics, okay, just this easy number example into something more abstract and then the alternating digit sum basically popped out giving us zero, telling us overall that 143 must be a number divisible by 11. I mean this right here is basically just an equivalent way of rewriting it. Meaning this right here proves for, num uh, for number 143 that it's going to be a number divisible by 11. But for more complex numbers, okay, not complex numbers in the sense of complex numbers, but for numbers where, the, uh, where one is going to be tracked over to another tenth place, it becomes a bit more um, delicate and you have to deal with modular arithmetic as mentioned before. But overall the process stays the same and this is how you can check if a number is divisible by 11 or not. So here for the people who always wondered how to divide numbers by 11, here's the trick. And I hope you did enjoy what you have seen today. And if you want to see more number theory, algebra, and all the other things that we did today, divisibility rules, competitive mathematics, then I invite you to check out the contents of today's sponsor Brilliant, who are kind enough to sponsor yet another video here on this channel. As mentioned just a second ago, over on Brilliant you can find a lot of topics in mathematics, number theory, algebra, also abstract algebra, competitive mathematics and many more. And it doesn't stop there. Brilliant is your source for some of the best interactive online learning content out there on the internet and they specialize on STEM content, STEM education. Be it chemistry, physics, mathematics, philosophy, search engines, they also got that. Whatever it is you are seeking for, Brilliant definitely has something up their sleeve for you. And their interactive content is something that's very dear to my heart. I use Brilliant on a weekly basis, basically, on a regular basis. And I even show, even though the website is in English, their courses in class. And it really helps visualize things like geometry, number theory, etc. very nicely for especially high schoolers, grades 7 to 10. And they can really benefit from their content too. And the language barrier is not a problem because they really shine with their interactive content. I can stretch this enough, but most of the time for school mathematics it's enough to learn by doing, taking visuals into consideration and just play around with these visuals. Numbers speak for themselves. I mean, if it comes to geometry, just adding angles up and the like, you got Greek letters and numbers. The language really doesn't matter on that behalf. And this makes it for a very good resource, even in my country. And if you're a teacher like me, or maybe you're just a student, really doesn't matter. Brilliant helps you to learn something new every day. And you should definitely try it out by using the link at the top of the description, brilliant.org. With it, you're going to get free access to a big portion of Brilliant already, which is great in and of itself. But more importantly, the first 200 people to actually make use of the link get 20% of an annual premium subscription, which is a really great deal, considering how much content they have available on their website already. You're going to learn something new every day and learning something new can't be compensated by money. Trust me on this. It's an experience for a lifetime and it's going to stick to your head forever. So definitely make sure to check it out and support the channel this way. If you did enjoy this video then also make sure to subscribe to the channel and don't forget if you're interested in woodworking DIY projects or just me talking random stuff then go over to Flemmy's Wood 2 and subscribe to this channel too to support this and the other channel basically equally much. And up to the next video, I wish you guys a flamble day and please stay safe. Not like me, I'm pretty ill but didn't catch corona. <laughs> but still, please stay safe and have a flamble day. Ciao!